Welcome back, everybody. Learning is a hobby here. Uh, I want to continue with uh, another <laughs> another episode of my bookshelf tour. Uh, the bookshelf that I'm going to show you today is mainly physics stuff, and there's some um, stuff on economics, and uh, well, you'll see when, when we get to the shelf. Um, so let me turn the camera around. We'll get to that, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. All right, so I'm gonna have to walk around and <laughs> sit on the rug here to, to do this video because this is one of the bookshelves that's closer to the ground. Um, let me see if I can sit over here and not be in the, the frame of the camera. Um, this one book that's on, on the top here and the rest are just too tall to keep anything else on top. So maybe I'll just start with this one. Let me turn the, actually turn my computer around so I can make sure that everything is in frame and the lighting is good and everything so okay so this this book is um foundations of quantum mechanics and exploration of the physical meaning of quantum theory by travis norson um i guess this is an undergraduate book because it says undergraduate lecture notes in physics i haven't uh, done anything with this book yet i i found out about it through a physics channel on youtube which i apologize to i i don't remember the name of the the channel um that where i f i found this book but uh it's the his description of it um you know made it sound really interesting so i wanted to pick up a copy and take a look at this when i learn when you know when i get to get around to um get around to, to quantum mechanics so um that's the one that, the one book that was on top of everything here so we can go now to the the bookshelf itself all right so here is the first book from going from left to right uh let me see does this show up on the camera this is uh oh actually there's you can see the title here this is uh physics for mathematicians by Michael Spivak. Yes, that Michael Spivak. This is Mechanics 1. Um, I don't know if he has any plans for doing Mechanics 2 or if he has any plans to do further books on physics for mathematicians, but he has this one, which I own. Um, people seem to like this one. Uh, I read it, a, a review by Michael Baez, who is a, a mathematical physicist, that's, and he his recommendation was to kind of avoid this one. Uh, which I, I can understand. Um, it's always better to read textbooks written by people that work in the field. And obviously, Michael Spivak is not a physicist. He's a, a mathematician. And um, John Baez says that there's some some conceptual mistakes and stuff in here um, that would be would not be overlooked by a physicist. So keep that just keep that in mind. Uh, I haven't really looked too much um, in this into this book because you know, for mechanics, we're doing the Taylor book. So, uh, but I have it on my shelf. That's uh, just, I guess, like an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting choice to have on your shelf. I don't know. Uh, this is General Relativity by Robert M. Wald. Uh, this is supposedly uh, a classic. Um, I'm led to believe that general relativity books are mainly like a graduate level topic. Um, so it's probably going to be a while until I get to general relativity, but this is one of the books that I'm going to use. There's some other ones on here that you'll see that I'm going to use as well. Um, so this one is probably, it's probably not the one I'm going to go through on the channel, whenever that is that I, that I get to general relativity, uh, but it'll be one that I use as a supplement. This one comes recommended by, uh, for example, Mark Weitzman and some other people. So uh, next book. is Aspects of Symmetry, uh, Selected Arise Lectures by Sidney Coleman, the famous Sidney, Sidney Coleman. Um, and this is the, tr I guess, the transcription of some lectures that he gave, um, I think it was in Italy, Arise, I think Arise is in Italy, um, back in the 70s. So it's over my head at this point, so I, I can't say much about it, but eventually I hope to get up to the level where I can maybe kind of understand what he's talking about, but, uh, you know, we'll see if, if that's even possible. Um, next book is a famous one in the graduate curriculum, the graduate physics curriculum, uh, Classical Electrodynamics. I have the second edition by Jackson. Uh, apparently, this is like the 
book for graduate level electrodynamics. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll look at that maybe, you know, maybe at some point if we get up to that, that level. Uh, this one is also a famous book on classical mechanics by Goldstein. Um, I managed to get the uh, international edition, so it was a bit cheaper. Um, this is the third edition. Uh, it's by Goldstein, Poole, and Safco. This is, a, from what I understand, a pretty standard text in classical mechanics. Um, I'm not quite sure on whether this treatment is considered graduate level or undergraduate level, but um, when I get to, you know, the when I, once I get through the, my undergraduate books, I might take a look at this one uh, and see if, uh, you know, if, if it's, uh, if it deepens my knowledge of classical mechanics, I guess. Um, next one is, this is the book, if I ever get around to, ge to uh, general relativity on the channel that I plan to do on the channel, which is an Introduction to General Relativity, Space, Time, and Geometry by Sean Carroll. It comes highly recommended. Um, and as I go through these books, I'm realizing a lot of these are like books that I, I have for later on. So I, I'm not going to really have much to say about them because, like I said, I, I don't really know these subjects yet. So um, this is Sidney Coleman's Lectures on Relativity, uh, edited by David Griffiths, who wrote the, uh, the Electromagnetism book that we're going to go through and the uh, quantum physics books that we're gonna that we're gonna go on, uh, through on the channel. Um, so yeah, Sidney Coleman. Uh, next book is also by Sidney Coleman on uh, quantum field theory. Uh, the lectures of Sidney Coleman, forward by David Kaiser, uh, and David Griffiths was one of the editors. And I believe you can find lectures online uh, that go along with this book uh, through on YouTube. So that's. A good reason to pick this up. Mark Weitzman seems to really like this book, so I decided to pick it up. Again, Sidney Coleman. So, um, next I have a couple books on quantum mechanics, uh, and I again these I'm not sure if they're considered. If you're a physics physics student or or a physicist or you know you have a degree in physics, maybe you can let me know um, if these are graduate level or undergraduate level. But I have uh, Principles of Quantum Mechanics, Second Edition by Shankar. Uh, and I also have Modern Quantum Mechanics, third edition by Sakurai, who uh, both of these books, I think, are pretty standard texts. Um, but like I said, I don't know if it's better if I, like, for example, I think I might try to read Shankar along with the Griffiths book when I do that. I think Sakurai is considered more graduate level. I'm not so sure about uh, Shankar's book, but like I said, if if you're more knowledgeable about, about physics, you can let me know in the comments. Um, then I have another couple books by Anthony Z, whose group theory book I talked about um, on a previous video, uh, which I really like from what I've read so far. Uh, he has a book on uh, general relativity called Einstein Gravity in a Nutshell, and I'm told that this is a, a pretty great book on, on uh, uh, relativity. He also has, I think, like a nice introductory chapter on special relativity, so I might read that along with the... Um, the book by Morin when I get to special relativity, the, the section in here, I mean, on special relativity. And then here we have quantum field theory in a nutshell. Again, both books by Anthony Z. Uh, both of these seem to be really well liked by the physics community. Again, I haven't gone through them yet, though. So but I do like his book on group theory, which I have read some of. All right. Next two books also are, I guess, considered pretty, pretty classic. Um, and you can see that they're these are some gigantic ass books. <laughs> Look at the size of these things. Um, but anyway, they're both written by. Well, actually, there's there's slightly different authors on both of them. Uh, but Kip Thorne is is a uh, 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 an author of both of these. Uh, Gravitation is, uh, I guess, like a pretty standard graduate level book on um, on general relativity. This is written by Misner, Thorne, and Wheeler, and this is modern classical physics, uh, covers optics, fluids, plasmas, elasticity, relativity, and statistical physics um, by Kip Thorne and Blanford, uh, Roger Blanford. Um, both of these, like I said, are, are pretty, what I, from what I understand, pretty standard graduate level books on these topics. Um, and you can see uh, 
there's, I mean, there's no shortage of information in these books. So, you know, whenever we get around to these topics, uh, this, I'm sure these will come in really useful. Okay, uh, the rest of the books here are on like economics and um, games and, and so on. So the first book I have here is Mathematics for Economists uh, by Simon and Bloom. This book is used in my college for, um, you know, the Mathematics for Economists class that they that they have. So I guess uh, if you're um, uh, an uh, econ <laughs> What, what would it be, an economics major, I guess, then this would be a math class that you would take. And this is the textbook that they use for it. It's a pretty good textbook. I've read portions of it. I haven't gone through too much of it because, you know, I, I already know a lot of the subjects that they talk about in here, but it's done in the, the context of, you know, economics. So it, it's still interesting to see, you know, certain uh, mathematical concepts applied in, a, a, you know, in a scientific field, a specific scientific field. So yeah, I, this one's okay. Um, next book is a book on um, uh, voting theory by Spiro, Numbers Rule, The Vexing Mathematics of Democracy from Plato to Present. Uh, I believe this is not really a textbook. It's more like a popular book, but there is mathematics in it. Um, and it describes, like I said, the you know, the mathematical history of voting theory and so on. So, but I, I haven't read that one yet. Okay, next one um, is Moving Beyond Modern Portfolio Theory, Investing That Matters by uh, John Nekumnik and James Hawley. Um, just a interesting note about this book. Um, I, I read, I think I read like the first chapter in it. Uh, but at this point, it's a little bit above my my level. Um, John McCumnick is uh, a relation of mine uh, through my wife's side of the family. Um, so if you do decide to pick up this book, uh, or I should say, I recommend picking up this book. Uh, if you guys do, you know, do that, uh, I might win some points with the wife. So <laughs> do me a favor and uh, uh, give this one a look. Um, next one is... An Introduction to Quantitative Finance by Stephen Blythe. I think there's, I picked this one up a long time ago, so uh, my memory might not be absolutely correct on this. I think there are lectures for this book that you can find on YouTube or else, it, or else it's like a talk or something. I actually don't remember which one it is uh, because like I said, it was a long time ago and watching, I, I watched one of the videos I think and I decided to pick up the book because it uh, sounded interesting. Um, then I have, see, I have a bunch of these are, like I said, are on, uh, the same topic, but here I have, uh, Mathematics for Finance by Kapinski and Zastowaniak, um, an introduction to financial engineering. This is the second edition. Um, I haven't started reading this one yet, but I'm interested in the mathematics of finance. So I have that one and the next few books are on finance as well. Um, Actually, let me let me do both of these together. Uh, there's this book by Stephen Roman. The I've I've talked about Stephen Roman before. He wrote that uh, one of my favorite books on um, advanced linear algebra. This is Introduction to the Mathematics of Finance, uh, Arbitrage and Option Pricing. This is the second edition. And then also I have uh, Mathematics of Finance and Intuitive Introduction by Donald Sari. Um, I would suggest if you, I would suggest these two books to. Um, to learn about the, the mathematics of finance, but start with Sari's book. He has all of the lectures for this book that you can watch on YouTube. And uh, it's a well-written book. I actually went through this book a long time ago. Actually, well, not that long ago. It was, um, this book I, was a project for me uh, back at when the pandemic started. So when, you know, when we were in lockdown, this was one of the projects that I was doing. So I was watching his videos and, uh, going through this book and doing the exercises and so on. And I really liked it. Um, so I highly recommend this one. Uh, and then also I love Stephen Roman. So, but this book I think is a little bit more advanced than this one. So if you start with this one and go to this one, I think, uh, you know, you'll have a pretty nice, uh, you know, at least basic knowledge of the mathematics of finance. Um, then also I have this one, which I've also, whoops, which I have also gone through. Uh, this was a book I did also in the pandemic. 
So I had the uh, Sari book as a project. And then this was my other project that I started with uh, in 2020, uh, the mathematics of elections and voting. So this is on voting theory. I also recommend this one. It's a really nice, it's a short book. So it's, you know, kind of a quick read. It's just an introduction to the to mathematics of voting. So it's not like, you know, it doesn't go hugely into the, the theory, but it's a nice introduction to the topic. If you don't know anything about it, the problems are, are fine. Um, yeah, it's, it makes a nice project book. Um, then I have, maybe I'll do these four together because they go together, uh, written by the same author. Uh, let's see, do I, can I fit all of these in, in the screen at the same time? Yeah. So uh, Primer for Mathematics of Financial Engineering. This is a second edition by Dan Stefanica. There's also uh, the solutions manual for it. And then there's also... Uh, a linear algebra primer for financial engineering, covariance, matrices, eigenvectors, OLS, and more. Again, my same authors, Dan uh, Stefanica, and there's the solutions manual for that as well. I haven't looked at these yet, so I can't say how good they are, but apparently they're they're pretty standard uh, for these topics in colleges. So, um, right, only a few more books left to go. Let's see, I have uh, Linear Programming and Economic Analysis by Dorfman, um, Samuelson, and Robert uh, Solo, Solo, or Solov. Um, this is a Dover book. You know, we love Dover, Dover books. Uh, it's on linear programming with, uh, you know, an, an emphasis on economic, uh, the economic side of things. Uh, and then the next three books um, are on games. And I think... I want to go through at least one of these books on the channel at some point, um, which is this one. I want to go through this one on the channel, The Mathematics of Games and Gambling, second edition by Edward Packle, uh, which I'm in the middle of going through at the moment. But I, like I said, I think I want to do this one on the channel at some point. There's the uh, Basic Gambling Mathematics, The Numbers Behind the Neon by Mark Bullman. And then uh, this is a Dover title here. This is How to Gamble If You Must, Inequalities for Stochastic Processes by Dubbins and Savage, um, edited and updated by Suderth and G Gilat, or Gilat. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but um, yeah, I haven't read anything from these two, but I'm in the middle of this one. And like I said, I like I like it so far. I'll, actually, I like it quite a bit. Uh, this is put out by the uh, Mathematical Association of America. So again, this might be a nice like project book. Um, so like I said, I definitely want to do this one on the channel just because I, I really like this one so far. And that's about it. That's the entirety of, of uh, this shelf here. Um, it's almost the end of my science books. There's some other like stragglers around here on on other bookshelves that are just hanging out <laughs> um so i still have a, a bunch of bookshelves left to do but let me turn the camera around say goodbye to you guys and um uh and then we'll get to the next uh video tomorrow all right let me turn the camera around Okay, so again, uh, I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Um, let me know what you think about the books in the comments or if you have other recommendations. Um, I'll put the, the uh, affiliate links down below if you want to purchase any of these books. Please do uh, purchase them through the affiliate links because the channel gets a little bit, a tiny little cut back from, um, uh, a tiny little cut from Amazon if you buy it through that link so you'll be helping the channel out a lot and I'll be very grateful for you for doing that um it doesn't cost you anything extra it just gives the channel a bit of a, a cut of the price of the book um I also have a patreon page which uh is for you know five dollars a month uh and there's extra a lot of extra content on there uh, on more elementary topics in mathematics so if that sounds interesting check that out uh and i think that's it the next uh i think the next two videos are oh i should say like and subscribe <laughs> almost forgot like subscribe hit hit the bell button um the uh uh next two videos i'm going to i'm going to do are my recreational math books and my educational math books uh, by educational math books i mean like books that educators use uh you know to 
I don't know, to, to educate, you know, figure out um, things to ways to educate people in mathematics and so on. Uh, I didn't really word that very well, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and then I, I still have my shelves on uh, my other shelves on my history of math books, which I still haven't had time to rearrange, but uh, I'll do that at some point soon. So I'll, I'll end the video here again. Thanks for watching everybody. Please do like, and subscribe and hit the bell icon. Uh, that's probably the, the easiest way to support the channel. Uh, all you gotta do is click on the button. <laughs> um, and I'll see you guys in the next video until that time. Keep learning everybody.